Editing is really just problem solving. And the more you understand the tools, the easier it is to solve the problems. What good is an idea if you can't make it come to life? My goal with this course is to teach you the tools to bring your wildest ideas to fruition. Welcome back to another YouTube video, guys. I know it's been probably around five years since I've created this, but I'm honestly not gonna waste a ton of time with explaining because I have a video to teach you. So the video you just watched is actually from the launch video from Colder Creative. I used to be the main editor for Colder Creative as well as Sam Colder. And I'm not gonna get into too much of that. It was awesome. There's a ton of different things that I can talk to you about, but we're gonna save that for another video because I'm here to teach you exactly how to do this transition. Okay, so this transition was actually shot with a lens called the Laowa Pro or Laowa lens. It's a probe oh. lens that's actually an F14 macro, which gives you some pretty crazy shots. But the thing is, is when you wanna get depth of field and you're trying to shoot a normal looking shot, there is basically zero depth of field because it's at F14. And we actually retook the shot at 20 millimeters, 1.4, and we just did a pullback shot as smooth as possible to simulate the exact shot that we did before, leading into this mask that I'm going to show you now. And when we actually edited this video four years ago, we were using Premiere Pro and After Effects for most of our stuff. And since then, he's launched a DaVinci course and gone to the right software for basically everything that we need. Okay, so enough explaining. Let's jump into the program and actually get editing. So as you can see, this is the original shot and it was taken at 60 frames per second, but actually slowed down to 24 frames per second here. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna wanna do is just get these two shots lined up, and then I'm going to drop the opacity down to about 40%, and just to get that actual pullback shot to match as much as possible. Now that we have all the timing and everything kind of roughly where we want it, I'm going to bring this into Fusion. So I'm actually gonna go over here because I did the timing a little bit better. And basically you're just going to select all clips and you can say new fusion clip, but I already have a shortcut, which is control E. And it basically is just going to combine all of this stuff into one place, but with infusion tab. And the first thing we're gonna do is just rename each one of these so we're not completely confused because it is very hard to tell which one is which. So rename or F2, this is gonna call F-stop because we remember what that was. And just to double check, yep, this is, this is the pen shot and you can see right here and just keep track of it. And we're going to press this and rename this to pen shot. Immediately we're going to rename as book mask shot. So the first thing we're gonna do is actually do exactly that, is mask out the book shot. So we're going to use the polygon tool right here and actually unselect this just so we can see what's happening and then we're going to go to a point where the mask is kind of seeing where it's going to go okay so right here we're just going to press the polygon tool we're going to go in and just mask this so we're just going to go through the edge of here and basically just do as good as possible a mask on this edge here. So now that we have this frame, we're basically just gonna go before this and after this. Basically, we're just gonna make sure that edge is masked out. After you've made your mask, make sure the inspector tool is selected and just go ahead and select the keyframe of center, size, and make sure not to click the soft edge keyframe because we're going to want that to be relatively the same throughout the whole entire shot. So I'm going to go through a few frames and just make the size a little bit bigger, make the center, and then and just manually go through this to adjust it as good as possible. So I like to make sure I'm going about four or five frames because it just saves time. Like, so it does fill the keyframes fairly well. And you can always go back and just adjust the frames after. And it does basically, it just helps you not have to work so hard.
Okay, so we basically just masked everything. It's not perfect. The more time you put into it, the better the result will be. But for this demonstration, I think it's fine. So now we're going to just attach this to this shot here below. And it looks pretty weird. And that's because this polygon needs to be inverted. And then that soft edge just needs to be applied ever so slightly. So now you're starting to basically see the effect that we originally wanted, which is perfect. But now you have this freaking mask that just kind of sits here and we don't really want that. So we're gonna go here and basically when it gets small enough. So we're going to want to completely remove this node. And by doing that, we can literally just make it non-existent. So we'll press this and just zero it out because we don't want that anymore. Play it back and there we go. Okay, so we're basically going to use the same polygon mask to mask out the bottom part of this. We don't wanna see these legs, that makes sense. So we're gonna start the mask here. So size is at zero. We're gonna bring that back up to something we can see and just bring this back into frame because why not just use the same mask and then just go through and mask this very simple line and we'll clean up the feathering in a little bit so there we go let's go back one frame just kind of fill this line here and and then fill the whole frame <clears throat> and then there you go we can just press the feather now with the keyframe and just crank that up because it is really just yeah there you go okay so playing it back okay looking good bring it back out so you can actually play a little bit more with the speed ramping i didn't really do too much speed ramping because i'm just trying to show you what i did and the next thing we're gonna do is just basically show this pen shot which is we want more action this is just a really these don't seem cohesive and it's just a pen just kind of static so what we're gonna do is just add a transform node to this pen so we're gonna just zoom this up a lot because i want this to feel cohesive i want this to feel like these two shots are married together and so we're just gonna go right before that frame layer keyframes size position and these things we don't need to actually touch and we're just going to go a few frames and then bring this back to 0 0.5 0.5 and bring the scale back down this looks really bad so what we're going to do is just isolate this actual keyframe go to our spline tool here and let's do transform transform one Yep, that's correct. Bring that up here and just play around with the timing. Hold down shift so it doesn't actually change anything. Shift S will just make those curves really nice. And let's see what we can do here. So I think in the actual film, we had it go kind of like this. Um, let's see. And it's honestly just really jarring right now. So essentially you're just gonna wanna play with these parameters until you are very happy with everything. So essentially what we're trying to do is just make this camera motion as seamless as possible. 
Again, this is just kind of like the masking. The more time you want to put into it, the more time you want to really smooth things out, you're going to get a better result. When we did this, we took a very long time to perfect this. I remember sitting there for hours on this sequence alone, just lining up the sequences. That added pen move, just going through, making sure it was smooth as possible. But the last thing that we're going to do to this, which I'm going to show you right now, and as you can see, there's these lines and basically just what we did was scale in. So we're gonna do that. We're going to just add that transform node afterwards, just bring it in a little bit closer so we don't see any of those things. So the cream of the crop that you're going to do is basically add motion blur. So so an incredible plugin that we used for the original video in After Effects is RSMB, which I actually have on DaVinci Resolve as well. But the actual DaVinci Resolve motion blur is very similar, maybe not as good as RSMB, so we're going to use that. But I do have RSMB, it's an incredible plugin. It does really slow your computer down, even now. Um, so we're gonna just actually get rid of this node, add a motion blur node, VBI, uh, there's different types of motion blurs you can really play around with. And you're going to want to select better, large, and just increase that motion blur scale. And basically, you just add that on. I actually want the pen to be completely in focus after a certain specific point about here. So I'm gonna bring that back down to zero. And yeah, you can really just play around with these things. Now that we finished up with the Fusion tab, we're actually gonna go back into the Edit tab to color grade this. So the next thing we're actually gonna do is right click, press Open in Timeline, and this is where we're going to do our color grades. We have all three clips here. I'm just gonna do a quick color grade of each one. And for the heck of it, let's use Sam's actual LUTs. So we're actually going to select the primary shot first, is not being seen currently. So we're actually gonna disable this, go to it, use the color space transform node. So you just add that on. And basically this was shot in with the pocket 6K. I don't really want to sit here and color grade that forever. So you're just going to select your camera with Sony, it's S-Log or S-Log 3, Pocket, let's just go through this. Blackmagic Design, Pocket 4K, find that again, 4K, and then output to Rec 709 because that is where all the LUTs are at. And just basically have this as your first node, second node, add whatever color grade you want. Um, Sam's actual ones are not looking too good here. So this is actually a pack that I helped my friend with and we're just gonna use that. This seems kind of similar to what we used originally. I'm going to dial that back a little bit and go to the first node and then add my colors in between. Quick grade, we're not gonna go too in depth in this. For those of you wanting to do more in depth coloring, I will be doing actual tutorials on this stuff. This is just to get back into it and I'm sorry for rushing through things. It has been five years since I've done this, so bear with me. And because this is raw, we can actually go back and change this ISO. And this honestly looks better than the actual video we did years ago. Um, but yeah, let's just uh, quickly do this and we'll finish up the grades for the other ones. Now that we've color graded it, let's go back to the timeline and just view this. Looks pretty decent. So we're basically finished, but for those of you who do this within an actual edit, it's good to just, after you've finished everything, render in place, because it will speed up your whole process. So right click, render in place. Let's do Apple ProRes. Save it to anywhere, your project files folder, and just let it render out. So basically, you render it, Make sure you don't render and replace your actual Fusion clip. So just disable that, 
keep your rendered one above it because now you have a perfectly good clip. And this might be a butchered version of what we did, but you get the point. Okay, so that is a very quick version and explanation of how we did that shot years and years ago using DaVinci Resolve and Fusion. You can use After Effects, you can use a lot of different programs, but this is the holy grail. Honestly, they're all great. I've used Final Cut Pro, I've used Premiere Pro, and I've used DaVinci Resolve and After Effects. They all have great, great things. You can really get similar results in every single program. So it's really up to you what you want, but DaVinci Resolve has it all and really incredible trackers that Final Cut and Premiere Pro do not have. So that's why I'm in this one. Okay, so that's all for now. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Maybe make a suggestion of what I should do next, but I will be creating videos and I will be teaching you what I know in here. I hope you guys like this video. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. I will see you guys in the next video.